It's time for an upgrade. 28 years. It's been 28 years since I've been sim racing, my god. And that entire time I've been doing it in the best way I know how. At a desk. From my early days driving with a keyboard in NASCAR Racing 1 to discovering Grand Prix Legends and upgrading to a flight style joystick so I could make a smooth lap. Ultimately around the turn of the century, which sounds dramatic but it's true, when I got my first wheel, the Logitech Momo. What a day. Hooking up to a desk is the easy, affordable, and quickest way to go sim racing, and up till this point it's been mine as well. But now, and I can't believe I'm saying this, I've got a rig. This is the Next Level Racing GT Track, Next Level Racing's top of the line sim cockpit, and my new home. Seriously, I'm never leaving, it's very comfortable. This is way more than I set out to get, so let me tell you what happened. I found Next Level Racing through Mike at Sim Racing 604. He uses their products. They've got some really nice affordable options for wheel stands and cockpits, and what I was looking for at the time was out of stock, so I got in touch with them about when it might be back. And long story short, they offered to send me this instead for free. I hope this doesn't come off as the ungrateful sim streamer, look what I've got moment type video. This is not a sponsored video. I told Next Level Racing that I don't do hardware reviews. I don't really have the equipment to do something like that. I don't want sponsor placements in videos. This sim racing overall, YouTube, is my escape from real work. So anything that makes it more like real work, like sponsorships and contracts and all that, I'm just really not that interested in. And I think over monetizing something like this would just be less fun to create, if not less fun to view. But they were cool with that. And it showed up at my door this week. And after getting it all set up and starting to use it, uh, I decided I did want to make a video about it because I'm just so excited that I have a rig and it's all thanks to everyone that enjoys this. So let me take you on a bit of a journey. I guess I'll, I'll call this my rig tour since I've never done an overview on the equipment that I use. Over the past year or so, I've been dramatically able to upgrade my sim racing setup piece by piece thanks to those watching. They've gotten to the point where I've essentially constructed a pseudo rig at a desk. Something I don't hear a lot of equipment reviewers encourage is to buy the right sim racing gear for the setup that you have. Up until the end of 2020, I was racing with my venerable G27 pedals and wheel. I'd also gotten the Thrustmaster Shifter TH8A, which I'd gotten to replace the Logitech one that had finally given up after some eight years of heavy use. To me, this was the perfect desk setup. The Logitech wheel has the right amount of force feedback torque for a desk. The pedals are made to sit on a floor, and, and I had a chair without wheels, so I wasn't sliding around. Every video you've seen up until the end of 2020 was made with that setup, provided endless amounts of fun. But I've been so fortunate that what I've done here is enjoyed by you all, so I played a large part in being able to make some upgrades at the start of 2021. I could tell that after nearly a decade of heavy use, the G27 was starting to wear, and, and to be honest, the idea of racing with some different wheel rims based on cars I was driving was pretty exciting. So I upgraded to the Fanatic CSL 2.5. This is the non-DD wheelbase. I purchased it only a couple months before Fanatic announced the DD, but I'm still incredibly happy with my purchase. Along with the base, I purchased what they call the Club Sport Steering Wheel Round 1 V2. A lot of numbers. This is a 270 millimeter wheel rim. I bought it specifically because it matches closely what they would have used in 1960s and 70s F1 cars, which if you hadn't noticed is kind of my bread and butter. It's also appropriate for 80s and 90s IndyCar and some sports cars and stuff as well. Anything with a cramped cockpit, this is very similar to the wheel they would have used. I have it coupled to their universal hub, which gives me some paddle shifters and a whole bunch of buttons and dials, which I didn't even install all of. I like this wheel a lot. It might be a little small for some folks, but it just feels right in the hands for some of these types of cars. And having it be completely round does help with the oversteer that you get in a lot of these cars. You can grab it from any position around the wheel and, and catch yourself. While we're talking about wheels, I also did pick up this bad boy. This is Fanatic's Podium Classic wheel. I wanted something to fulfill the other end of the spectrum with cars. The pre-war stuff, the massive steering wheels, the 1950s Formula One, 60s classic cars and things. I actually shopped around for real steering wheels. The way the mounts work on the Podium Hub, you can actually attach pretty much any kind of wheel. There's a few different mounting patterns. So you don't have to buy a purpose-built sim racing steering wheel. But looking at the prices for what's out there for real wheels that fit what I wanted, just a big classic, no frills type wheel. This one was actually just as cheap as the rest of them. I think this one is 35 centimeters, a little over a foot, 13 
or so inches wide. Not as big as steering wheels were in some of the pre-war cars. I think they got up to like one and a half feet, maybe even bigger. But it sure feels a lot more appropriate in your hands for those older types of cars and gives you a little more leverage to help steer. It makes that slow steering that older cars have just make more sense, nice and smooth. The wheel itself also feels right for NASCAR stuff and all the GT cars and everything I enjoy. I did mount a few buttons to it, just a few buttons for the essential stuff, but no flappy paddles or anything like that, just a nice simple wheel. So the wheels were a big draw for me to upgrade, and I just have these two right now. I might get some more in the future, but I'm pretty happy with these two. They really kind of fit almost every car that I like to drive and help enhance that experience just a little bit more than having just one wheel rim provides. I had the CSL 2.5 mounted to my desk initially with the clamp that comes with it, and I've seen a few reviews specifically talk about this in regards to the DD and the desk clamp, so I believe they're nearly the same. It has a single screw in the bottom that's meant to tighten it to the desk. I think Yardier does a video on that. I found it just not sufficient for a wheel like this. I could never get it tight. It would end up sliding around. I ended up getting what Fanatic call the Table Clamp V2. They love their version numbers. This thing is heavy. It bolts to the bottom of the wheelbase, much like it would bolt to a rig. It has a few different bolting patterns there. Don't quote me on it, but I think the DD as well would work something like this. It's a much more secure way to bolt the wheel to your desk. But like I said, this thing is heavy. I think it comes in at 12 pounds or so. So unless you have the sturdiest of wood desks, I don't know if I'd recommend bolting this to many. My old desk was solid wood, but I could tell this was putting a ton of strain on it. It mounts right to the front of the desk. So if your desk is anything but the thickest timber, it's probably gonna make it sag, or at a minimum, the whole desk will be somewhat wobbly. And this is the problem I had and why I started looking for rigs in the first place. I think my desk was starting to sag a little bit because of the weight. And although the wheel itself would never move, the desk would definitely move under fast movements. And it was far, far from unplayable, still very enjoyable. But it's what made me start looking at wheel stands and rigs and stuff like that. Enough about the wheels though, pedals. I used the G27 pedals with a brake mod and what they call a Bodnar cable for many, many years. Like I said, I think they're the perfect pedals for the floor. As long as there's something solid behind them, they're not going anywhere. But they did eventually start wearing out. In the summer of 2021, I noticed at full throttle, sometimes it wouldn't reach 100%, or when I let off the throttle, it would start spiking a little bit. I took them apart, I cleaned the pots and everything, but it ultimately didn't fix the issue. After a decade of heavy, heavy use, I think it's understandable they started to wear out. I lucked out that Fanatic announced the new CSL pedals at almost the same exact time, and, and seeing as now I had the wheelbase, it made perfect sense. They're also, in my opinion, for what they are, extremely affordable. In their basic two pedal setup, they're $80. Price is relative, 80 bucks is not a drop in the bucket, but when you compare the quality of them to what else is out there, they're so amazingly good for that price. But there are a couple caveats. I picked up these pedals with the additional clutch pedal as well, which is sold separately. That's another $40, so if you want them with the clutch, it's a little bit out of that steel pricing territory, but it's still a pretty good value. The biggest thing though is these pedals really aren't meant to be sat on the floor like the G27 ones are. They do have some rubber bits, that means you could sit them on the floor, but they really wouldn't be anywhere near as solid as the Logitech ones. So I actually got something I thought was really cool and I haven't seen anybody else use before. It's called a pine mount. At least that's the company. It's essentially a metal frame that you can mount any sim pedals on and it includes extensions that your chair can sit on so they lock together. Your pedals will never slide away from your chair because it's connected to them, at least temporarily. I think it's a pretty ideal scenario for any desk racer. I've seen a bunch of solutions to slidey pedals and this one may not be the cheapest, but next to a full rig, I think it's pretty ideal. So I mounted the CSL pedals to that day one when I got them and I haven't looked back. Now I don't have the load cell brakes for the CSLs that actually came out slightly after I originally bought them. As it is, the brake on these, I've adjusted to them well and I think it's a fine starting point, but I was surprised that the brake was less stiff than my G27 was. Now I had a mod in my G27 pedals for a heavier spring, so it's not exactly stock to stock. I think the stock G27 pedals definitely have a more flimsy brake than the ones here. But it definitely took some adjusting to. I think it took a couple hours at least till I got comfortable enough to do some laps. And then within a couple weeks, I was turning the same times that I used to or even being a little bit quicker thanks to the accuracy of these. And I guess I'll talk about the monitor as well. The beautiful screen in front of me is the Gigabyte M34WQ. It's a high refresh rate, 144 Hertz monitor. So it can get really smooth motion, especially from older Sims that can run at the full 144 FPS. Now, I might be an odd one. I get so many comments about how I have to try all these things that I'm doing in VR. 
I think VR is incredible. I've tried it a handful of times, but it's not as relaxing for me. I also don't think it generally makes as good of videos. So having a nice screen is what I prefer. I love the ultra wide resolution. I've been doing a few videos lately in that aspect rather than cropping the edges. And it's the cinematic scope, 21 by nine. Let's you see a little bit more of those side mirrors. Triple screens is a really nice option, but the added space of your rig with having those is, is not insignificant. And again, making videos and also playing a lot of older games that generally wouldn't support triples. I feel really nice about the single ultra wide screen. Nice and compact, but still giving a solid view. So that's just a rundown on my wheel and pedals and things since I never generally talk about that. And so I mounted everything up to the GT track rig. Folks like Barry Roland have amazing setup videos on these types of rigs. So I thought I'd spare you the process. This was the first rig of any kind I've ever set up. And it took me a decent amount of time, just a, a couple of evenings. But all in all, it was smooth. It just bolts together. The most time consuming part is adjusting the wheel and the pedals to get them to your liking position wise. They mount extremely solidly with bolts. so. To adjust them, you have to kind of disassemble things a little bit, but once it's in place, it's not something you're gonna adjust very frequently. The seat itself slides forward and back, so if you've got folks coming in and out of the rig or different folks wanna try it, that should hopefully be enough if you get everything centered just to have a little fun with. So I've had the rig for a couple of days now and I'm still getting comfortable with it, but there's two main things I've enjoyed so far. First is the comfort. My old setup, specifically my chair, was very uncomfortable, I'll admit. I had gotten some cushions for it, but in order to be low to the ground, I had this office chair, which I had sawed the bottom of the legs off of to lower it. And you know, I'm getting a little bit older now. I was maybe able to tolerate it a bit more a few years back, but especially in longer races, I was really starting to want something comfy. Kind of tough to find a good desk chair. I tried for a little bit to use a more normal desk chair. And since I had the pine mount, I wasn't gonna roll away, but even having a chair that swiveled for me wasn't gonna work. I never actually mentioned it because it sounded a bit like a cop-out, but I had an awful race with the 1958 F1 cars at Reams with AMSU. And that was my final straw for the swivelly desk chair. I went back to the uh, more uncomfortable one right after that. So yeah, with the nice bucket seat that the GT Track has, it's so much more supportive. And since it's mounted to a frame, it's literally not gonna move. So having that confidence is just gonna make me push a little bit harder, not having to worry about physically breaking something and just get on with it. Second thing is the wheel mount. All of this is fairly obvious, but having it mounted to a metal frame, like I said, is the main thing I was looking to do. I don't have to worry about my desk sagging or how heavy the old mount and everything are. It's just so incredibly nice to have everything so structurally sound and capable of handling more in case I ever upgrade to something like direct drive in the future. I think the CSL here is as far as you can go with a desk mounted wheel. Very much don't want to discourage anybody out there that has a DD and is mounting it to a desk. Just want to give my point of view in case there's some out there thinking of upgrading and not sure if they want to pair it with a desk or with a rig. You know, if I still lived in my old place where I didn't really have the space for a rig or any more solid mounting, I honestly wouldn't have ever upgraded beyond the CSL 2.5 here. And I even think with this, if I knew what I know now, I might have waited, maybe tried to have gotten a wheel stand or something from day one. Certainly would have gotten the upgraded desk mount immediately. So yeah, I guess if you're in the market for some sim stuff, I'd think first about what you have to mount it to. You don't need a rig to be competitive and most importantly, have fun. It's shocking whenever I see somebody dive headfirst in and before they've ever sim raced or used a wheel by like a full rig and everything. But definitely if you've done your time, if this is your hobby, if you have the space, if you have the budget, you're not gonna be disappointed. So Next Level Racing did not ask me to make this video. I think ultimately they're hoping that I enjoy their stuff enough and talk to people about it. I know I'm gonna be doing many, many virtual miles from this seat and I'm excited to take everybody along for the ride. So at the risk of sounding like a broken record, thank you so much for watching. I'm looking forward to wrapping up my IndyCar Racing 2 season, uh, continue on with the 1966 Richie Axelson career, but all in a bit more comfort. In the meantime, I'm gonna get back to driving and practicing. There's definitely a bit of a learning curve with upgrading anything about your sim racing equipment, especially now with my shifter down, kind of where it's properly supposed to be by my right leg. It's not quite as quick to switch from the wheel to the shifter, so I'm just having to get used to the muscle memory there and relearn things a little bit, but it's all coming back to me. So maybe a few fun races in the coming days while I adjust. So until then, thank you all so much for watching. Thanks to Next Level Racing. I still feel like I'm living a little bit in a dream, man. But this is GP Laps, and I'll see y'all again next time.